For this project, I'm going to make a canopic jar. I'm going to be making one of the jackal-headed god Duamutef. Here are the reference pictures that I will be using today. So I'm looking at these on the computer. So to make Duamutef, I'm going to be using some foil and some model magic. The foil is going to be the inside of his face. The model magic will go on the outside. So I'm going to rip this piece of foil in half first just in case I don't, just in case I don't need all of it. Now I'm going to crumple this up into the ball shape that I want for the head. And I have to remember this is going to be glued later on top of a lid for the jar. I'm going to be using a Pringles can. So from my lunch today I got my Pringles can and this is going to sit on top. I'm making a very short jar. So I want to make sure that it's wide enough and tall enough to have the jackal head. So here I am going to wrap a little bit on top of this and then I'm going to scrunch it to get the jackal ears. Jackal ears are almost like rabbit ears. So I'm going to scrunch it so it's almost rabbit shaped. I want to make sure this is kind of round and sits in a little bit. Get it even on both sides. Okay, so this is the start of my jackal head. Now I can get some more foil and create the bottom side of his head a little bit. So I think I'll do that. All right, now I have the neck and the back of the head. Flatten it out a little bit. Okay, so I'll be able to glue this on top of the lid just fine. Perfect. So I'm going to get my model magic. And I want to roll this out. I'm going to find a marker, maybe. It's got a nice flat edge. Use it like a rolling pin. I can also use my fingers to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Model Magic is fun because it's very fluffy. You can't pull it too thin though because you will get holes in it. So I'm just very carefully like pulling it apart with my fingers by mashing. I'll probably need another piece, which is okay. Miss Ruckel will give you two pieces of model magic. So I'm going to lay it across the top. Oh, but wait, I'm missing his nose. So maybe I need another piece of foil. Okay, pause. Now he has a nose. Very nice. So I'm going to press that model magic out on top of the foil. Very carefully kind of wrap it around the bottom. 
You can do this with Sculpey as well because you can bake the foil in the oven to set the Sculpey clay. So if this was me personally, that's what I would recommend. Model Magic is fun, but it is a little difficult to work with when you're trying to get something very pristine. But it's fun and you can find it anywhere. Sculpey, on the other hand, you'll need to go on a special trip to the art supply store. Model Magic, you can find at the grocery store. Okay, so I've covered most of the front. Now I need to get the back. I'm gonna pinch these pieces together and I need to get the back so I can close it up. All right, I have flattened out another piece of Model Magic to cover the back of my jackal head. Duamutef. So, canopic jars are protected by the four sons of Horus. You have Duamhotef that I'm making, he's the jackal-headed. There's the human-headed Imseti, who's the guardian of the liver. Duamhotef is responsible for the stomach. Happy looks after the lungs, he's the baboon. And last but not least is uh, Kebe Kebesenef. I'm sorry. He's responsible for the intestines. And um, he's the falcon-headed one. So Horus is one of the very important gods. Every god in Egyptian uh, religion is important to them. Uh, but Horus, obviously, his sons are very important because they protect your body in the afterlife. So he and his sons are important. Now I'm going to fix my little jackal ears. I'm doing a lot of pinching and smoothing. So you can just kind of smooth it out with your finger. That is the nice thing about model magic is that you can just pinch it closed and smooth it out. Most air dry clays, there's different techniques that you have to do. Um, that are a little trickier than this. Okay, so I'm going to pinch off that little bit of extra ear. Ooh, I felt some foil coming through. So I'm going to fix that. So his little jackal ears are looking a little lumpy, but that's okay. They don't look bad. Now, it is a 3D sculpture, so we want it to look its best from all the way around, not just the front. So I am going to smooth it all the way around. Kind of fill in some of these gaps. Okay, here it goes. So the cool thing is that he has the hair, it almost looks like a cape, kind of wrapping around. So the nice thing is with this extra lump, I can kind of give that illusion. Now I do want this to go straight down at the bottom so I can easily set it on the lid. So I'm going to fix this section over here, smooth this out, make sure his little cape is kind of blending into his ears. It's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. That's the biggest thing we have to learn in art. It's not everything that we do can be perfect, and that's okay. We don't learn if we don't make mistakes. If all you're doing is the right thing all the time, what are you learning? Nothing. That's right. Okay. So I'm going to get the lid to my Pringles jar. 
and try to flatten this out a little bit. Uh oh, got a hole down here. Okay. Now, I won't be able to glue it down until it's dry, but I can absolutely kind of squish them on the lid to get that flat bottom so it's ready to be glued. Okay, very cool. Now for some finishing touches, um, you can use any tools that you find, toothpicks, um, I'm gonna use a little bobby pin, and you can add in some designs. You just wanna press them in though, you can't like draw them like normal. I'm gonna press it in. So I'm gonna get the outlines of like the inside of the ear. And I'm using the back side of my bobby pin. It's just pushing in that little design following the shape of the head. That curve right there gets a little weird. Do the same on the other side. So if you can see that, I've got those shapes drawn in. Now I can draw in the eyes. I want to use something else. So I have the back end of a paintbrush that I can use to draw in the eyes. And I'm just going to roll it to get those creases. And so that the inside of my eye kind of puffs out, makes it three dimensional. So I have a kind of weird looking eye that's kind of puffy sticking out, but it's cool. Okay, now I'm going to figure out where to put the other eye and use that same technique. So I like this rolling technique to get the nice curves. I do on the bottom have to kind of push it in a little bit before I can get those kind of reminds me of bread dough and then I'm gonna push on the inside of the eye a little bit wiggle it back into place but I have two eyes and then his nose just gonna push that in You see, there's so much glare. Okay. And we'll give him a smile. Jackals are known for being tricksters. Now, I don't know about Duomo Tef. tef. <laughs> but he sure looks happy in some of these reference pictures I pulled up. So, I'm going to give him a little smile. Again, hard to see, but he has a little smile there. And I'm going to pull this around a little bit, kind of straighten it out. See if I can squeeze these pieces together to give him that kind of cloak look he has in the reference pictures. So make sure you're working from a reference so that you can actually see what it's supposed to look like. Your references can be your sketch but also should be pictures of the actual artifacts that are inside an Egyptian tomb. 
Okay. So that is my Duomo tech. And I have now a jackal head. You can make one to four jars depending on how much supplies you have. Uh, so this is a good start. Next video will be how to wrap your Pringles can in paper mache or plaster to decorate it. All right, so this needs to stay out to dry overnight and then it should be good to go the next day. You'll be able to paint this before you turn it in because these jars traditionally were painted. That paint just kind of fades away over time so we don't get to see them all the way that they were meant to be seen. All right, ta-ta for now.